Good morning, everybody. Happy Good Friday. morning. I'm very happy to be here. Hi, Judy. Hi, there. How are you? Oh, it's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm so it's been yeah, a week. Um, yeah, I'm very excited. I'm going away again this weekend. We're finally going away to Bird River Resort. And guess who's coming with? Is uh, Hubby going with? And he's finally decided that he's coming away with us to Bird River oh, Resort. That is so awesome. to go for like five years or something. And he has been very resistant. And then I booked to go away without him. And yesterday he said he's actually going to come with. And I'm like, Yay. I'm so <laughs> it's excited. Nice. It's nice having a family holiday with the whole family, you know, with the yes. husband included. So anyway, I'm very excited about going away. And one thing I thought would be really great to discuss, and uh, let me just get my my, my ducks yeah. in a row, because I, one thing I want to discuss, I'm reading for you. Ooh, okay. So when I said to people that I'm going away without my husband, a lot of moms said to me, Oh, really? You're going on your own, and how do you feel? Do you feel safe? And I said, yeah, I, I do. I, I, I'm i a very independent mom. I don't have to go everywhere with my husband. I'm happy driving long distances, all of that. But it did get me thinking. And I've spoken about the safety app, uh, Safer, a number of times. It's the safety app for women in South Africa. Yeah. And I must say that knowing that I've got that app, and all I have to do is shake my phone. So if my car breaks down on the side of the road or if we have any issues along the way, I actually feel, I mean, if you dial that, you know, you dial one or triple one, apparently you just go on to hold. I mean, you may as well stand there screaming help in the middle of nowhere <laughs> into <laughs> nothingness. That's what I hear. I've never had to dial it before. But I've heard some people say you, you phone the, the, the emergency line and you don't get any help. And I've tested the app a few times. And remember, I did it in that one live video. Once on purpose, once by mistake. <laughs> and um, they, they phoned me within seconds um, yeah. and asked me a couple of security questions. Um, so that was really, really awesome. So I feel, even though my husband's coming with, you know, um, it's, it's very nice to know that I've got that on hand. And very exciting. Our first giveaway. Let me go find my banner. I actually made a banner for it this time. Boom. <laughs> uh, chat to us in the comments about how you feel about safety when you travel with your kids or even alone as a woman in South Africa, and you could win a three-month safer subscription. Um, I, hmm? as, as the mom of young adults, this uh, app specifically appeals to me because your kids are out, and any mom with young adults or teens will know you don't sleep until they come back. Mm. So knowing that they had this would just be, you know, that that peace of mind. I think it's a great app. Yeah, 100%. And I mean, my kids are young, so they're not usually without me. They don't travel without me. But I've instructed them and I've shown them how to use the app. And um, so uh, is that up on the screen there? The it is up on the screen. Guys, I'm just fixing my hair this morning. Sorry, it's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now. Um, yeah, so I, I've explained to my kids, you know, like if we're in a car accident, I get knocked out. What do my kids do? Um, yeah. And I've, I've explained to them now how they shake the phone, what they do. And my kids are like, yeah, this is so much fun. <laughs> but um, I think that's fun, but they, <laughs> they're kind of into it. But I think that's also important. I mean, it's one thing we have the apps, but it's also important to teach our kids to use these apps. You know, like when my older kids were little and the first thing we learned was we learned the emergency number, how to dial a phone, you know, and I'm currently teaching Hamish that now. So he's currently learning how to use a phone. If something happens to mommy, he can get hold of someone. So it's important that we teach our kids how to use things like a safe app as well. Mm. Well, I've said to them, if there's any trouble, yeah. anything, you don't feel safe or in an accident and I get knocked out, this is what you do. So, yeah, that's really awesome. Uh, we've got Robin here that's saying she's got three kids and having the app makes her feel so much safer when she travels with them. Um, oh, Sandra's still waiting for the link to download. They'll send the app once it's available. Sandra won the one-year subscription. In, okay, fantastic. I don't know if it was a live video or if it was on my blog. Um, Sandra, I'll get back to you and I will chat to Gordon about that. Uh, so and what was the price of it again, Lynn? 
Um, it's 79 rand a month. Um, and I mean, that's really fantastic if you think about it, because it's not just for at home, it's for when you're on the road, wherever you are, you can get help. Um, and I see Zarina there, she doesn't drive much with her kids when her husband works away. Um, also, what we've got now for the month of November, let me have a look. Ooh. So um, if you use my code, Kabot, you get 20 Rand off a month off the safety app. So then you okay. get it for, what is it, 59 Rand a month, which is a really, really nice bargain. So let me go back to the comments and see here. Oh, it's coming fast. Uh, we've got Rebecca. Safety keeps her awake at night. Yeah. I, and, you know, I've got that post that goes up often um, every night at 1 a.m. on some of my social networks. And it basically says, Midnight Mommy Club, who's awake? And yeah. the amount of people that are awake in the middle of the night worrying or someone's had a bit of a break-in or someone's attempted a break-in and the moms are lying awake in bed because they can't sleep. It's terrifying. In fact, we had somebody break into our house um, in Saldana, not this house, the previous house. That's why we moved out. My husband just couldn't handle living there anymore. And I'm so grateful because um, they broke in while I was in Cape Town with my daughter. My son wasn't born yet. Uh, my daughter was um, a baby. She was not even one. And they broke in and they stole my husband's pants and his phone and his wallet from next to him. But I think they got oh, disturbed wow. outside, whoever it was, because they dumped it in the garden. So he woke up and he's like, something doesn't feel right. And then he realized that we'd been broken into and he found his stuff outside. But, you know, that's that's traumatizing. And the way we had our room was my, my baby's cot was closest to the door and our bed was at the other side of the room. And I, I have sleeping problems. I was breastfeeding, so I wasn't on my meds. So I had insomnia and my daughter didn't sleep. She, I mean, she wouldn't sleep more than longer than two hours at a time, day or night. Um, and she was always crying and colic and, you know, it was the whole night. I, I hardly slept. And I mean, if that person had broken in while I was at, at home, I would have woken up. And I don't know how other people react. You either have the fight or flight. And I, I'll go into attack mode. I probably would have been killed. Stabbed to do for something. Um, I must tell you that we had a lot of incidents when we stayed in Komiki, which, I mean, the entire year we were there, I barely slept. And as much as they've got a um, neighborhood watch and as much as I had ADT, um, I just felt I was anxious from the time I was awake until the time I went to bed because we had so many incidents. And it's more that, that feeling of the fact that somebody's just invaded your space, you know, and not, be, not feeling safe enough to actually go to sleep. Well, that's it. I mean, my husband said yeah. he couldn't sleep in that house anymore. He just said he can't. He feels so uncomfortable because somebody's been in our space. Somebody was standing right next to him while he was fast asleep. It's awful. Absolutely awful. So, whoa, no, thank you. <laughs> Definitely not for me. So, let's have a look. Uh, Sandra saying it's getting worse and worse. And, yeah, and the holidays as well. I mean, the holiday break-ins, every day, mm. everything's just kind of, um, no, no, definitely not. So, yeah. Okay, should we pick a winner? Oh, yeah, I know who I'm going to get to win because I recognize this name. Leanne Hancock, you won something. Last what? week. The Muffin you Mix. Won, and then you were in the wrong area. Oh, yes. <laughs> so I had to take away your win and give it to somebody else. Um, congratulations, Leanne. You have won the three-month Safer app subscription. Hopefully, you'll be able to sleep better at night and you'll feel safer when you are out of the house as well. Congratulations. Please just send me an inbox message on uh, my Facebook page, Kaboki, and then I will connect you with Safer. Awesome. So also... About going away this weekend, I wanted to share something with you guys. So last year, I bought myself the cutest costume. Now, I've got a strange figure. I've got no bum. I've got no hips. I have a big tummy. People think I'm pregnant. And then I've got these boobs. So I find finding a costume that fits me like I don't even want to go there. And what is with those shops? I mean, do they only cater for skinny people with like a yes. standard figure with the boobs and the hips and the bum and, and the tummy and everything is perfectly in proportion? Because I'm I just saying can't... yes. Hmm? I, I, I'm saying yes because I've not found a costume in three years. I still have the same but costume not... I'm using for three years because the rest of them. Right? Sorry? 
you started buying from Amazon. Yes. Sadly, this could be my downfall. <laughs> so I need, you know, the thing is, there's one thing about finding a costume that fits. And there's another thing, finding a costume that fits. You feel good. You feel confident. And you can actually walk up and down the beach without thinking, is this tucked in? Is that like, uh, you know, are my boobs flopping? Am I feeling, you know, nice and, and comfortable and secure and all of that? So I bought this costume from Amazon. And it's a, it's oh. a tank key. And then it's got this little bit under here. So it kind of, it's not under wire, but there's a, you know, it, it kind of keeps your boobs, everything, you know. <laughs> but and you've got a post about that one. It's like a little dress. And I read all the reviews on this. And specifically, I was looking for a big bust costume that keeps everything covered and looking nice. So I bought this last year. And this weekend, I'm going to get to wear it again. So I'll post my review up on the blog, up on Facebook and my social networks um, just now. But I'm so happy about this costume and I get to wear it again. And I can actually walk up and down the beach feeling comfortable, happy, confident, all of that. The only thing is <clears throat> the bottom is like a little hot pants and they are... Well, they're completely shapeless, so you can't even tell the front from the back, but it's hidden by the costume, and it's easy to find a black bottom somewhere. So if you are not happy with the bottom, then, you know, you can just go buy another one. I just wear it because you don't see it anywhere, and anyway, it's under the tankini. But, um, yeah, take note. Don't get excited about the bottom. It's the top. <laughs> I actually like the bottom. It looks like shorts. It is like shorts, but like what I'm saying is, you know, usually when you buy a pair of shorts, the back and the front is, is different. You literally yeah. cannot see which is the front and the back, and there isn't even a tag to show you. And but I don't know. I mean, I don't I'm know. Happy it, but I went and I, hmm? I bought a very expensive pair of Nike Nike um, running pants. You know, like Lycra running pants. Yeah. And I bought what I assumed was my size. And then I thought, no, hold up, because wherever you go, everything is always a size bigger because yes. like they cut stuff so small. So I bought this beautiful pair of, and I'm not even gonna lie, 700 Rand and like I'm a cheapskate when I buy clothes. Okay, I want seven pairs for that. So I'm like so impressed with that. <laughs> I'm with the but I'm so impressed with my, my lovely name brand pair of pants and I get home and they're three sizes too big for me. So now I'm rolling up the pants and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. I don't know what it is with fashion designers lately. I don't think they've remembered what people look like. No, all the sizes in the shops are different, you know. And the thing is, I'm not massive, you know. And when I go to the shop and I go there and the biggest size is, size is like a triple XL, and I put it on and then I get stuck in it in the clothing room and I can't get it over my boobs and my head. <laughs> I mean, what's with that? So I'm I mean, just saying, like, Mr. Price, if you're out there, come give us real moms, measure us, and maybe make some real clothes. Well, I must say, I'm buying from Superbalist a lot lately and I love their Fit Finder. And I, so you put your height, your weight, your body shape, all of that in. Okay. And tell you what size to buy. And I've been buying from, I didn't buy from Superbalist before this year, but I've started this year and I go to the plus size section and everything I've bought is spot on. It fits perfectly. It's not made. And that's the other thing. Like you'll find what often happens is you'll buy something in a large size, but it's not made for a large person. It's made for a skinny person. And they've yeah. just gone, okay, we'll just make it bigger. It's not made for anything other than a standard skinny blank body. It's, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I could go on all day I'm desperate to try Shine, I think it's called. Oh, yeah. Shine. Wait, hold on. Someone said something about Shine. Croatia. Shine. Yes. I have not I'm, bought from you. I'd love to. No, me either, because I'm not sure how the um, import costs work. But the other thing is just like for anyone who, because us moms don't spend a lot of money on ourselves. We like literally, we'll buy our kids a 700 Rand pair of shoes and then we look for a 99 Rand pair for ourselves. It's just <laughs> what we do, right? Um, <laughs> So where I love to shop is the China store because really? you find, yeah, I love their clothing. I never find that it doesn't fit because you can have a look and see and it's pretty much like measure it against your body, it fits. I also find that the pricing 
is really, really reasonable. So a 700 Rand dress at Truist is actually like 199 at the China store. And I'm like, I'm there, I'll have two things. And I'm a woman, so I change my look each season. I do. Like there's some things I don't. I'm always in black, different shades. But I mean, I do change my look. So I don't want to have to purchase thousands of rands worth of clothing no, knowing so I'm not going to wear it again next year. You know, even though I do have daughters, they don't like what I wear. My daughter thinks she's going to like what I wear. She told me that when she was three. I'm going to wear your clothes when I'm big. I'm like, when you're big, you're going to open my cupboard and say, ew. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, I'll often go, I'll say to, to my youngest, Kerry, I'll say to her, do you like this? And she goes, no. Okay, she's 18. But whereas <laughs> Tammy and I might swap something. <laughs> exactly. So, so I'm loving this. Candice Berry says, absolutely. They're selling clock tops, forgetting the world has Winnie the Poohs. I love that. Exactly. I mean, we don't all really have this, like, perfect figure. You know, most of us don't. But the shop's no, not at all. It's, it drives me absolutely bad. No, no, Rebecca it. likes my costume. Thanks. So do I. It's beautiful. There she is. There she is. Anymore. Sorry, guys. Hamish is just grabbing the charger to go take his phone to the room. So I think you can hear. Thank you. You're a star. Good job. Yeah, and Amon says she loves swimming, but it puts her all struggling to be comfortable. And I think that's a biggie for me is that I want to feel, you know, it's all very well going and saying love your body and just put it out there and go and feel happy. But that's not really how it works. You know, I watch Fit Like Mummy, Natasha. Oh, she's beautiful. And she pulls it off. She feels confident. But if I wear something, you know, she wears like crop tops and stuff. I, I just can't. I don't feel comfortable, you know, and then I don't swim with my kids because I don't feel comfortable. And then that, that for me is the saddest part. So this is like, it's not just a costume. It's, I get to really play with my kids. So we're going to the Berg River and I don't know if I'll actually get in the water, but if I want to, and if I want to sit and tan, I've got my cozy. I'm already very excited. It's the first time in the last 10 years I've had a costume that I'm like really feel good in. Well, I, I've decided to look at things in perspective. If I wear a costume and I don't look all that good or I don't feel all that good, I can still go in the water and play with Hamish because my husband never takes the photos anyway. So it's all good. It's not like anyone's going to capture that. <laughs> but you see, in this, I'm happy to have photos. It's really cute. I even put a photo of me up in my costume on Instagram when I did my review and my, me wearing my costume, you know, if I wasn't confident, I'd take a picture of the costume and I'd put that on my yeah. blog. <laughs> but no. but this is, yeah. this is it. We're out there so much. And like, you know, I have the chicken wings, guys. So you see the top half of me. <laughs> Judy spends five minutes before the live putting a camera here and here to like... I do. Like, I'm like, where do I... Yeah. <laughs> But you know why? Because when I take the glasses off, I feel 30 years younger. When I put the glasses on, I feel like the mom of seven. So January, when our new medical aid comes in, because I'm going to tell you now, you can kill your medical aid getting glasses. One of us is investing in contacts. Oh, okay, cool. Well, my, my tip for the camera, by the way, is I put my, 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 my laptop on top of my printer so it gives it this much extra height because if I have my laptop down and the camera goes up like this, then you see my double chin and you're like, yeah. Oh, so I just put it up a little bit. So I'm going to try and show see. you. I actually have a box holding. I don't, I don't know if. <laughs> I can. So I have. You. Can you see, guys? I have a, my camera on a box. Wait, this is work from home, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I pile things on my desk and put my laptop on top to get the... <laughs> I can't go higher, but you know, give me that side profile. <laughs> Short of holding it up here. <laughs> uh, we've got um, Nakatula. Nakatula. I hope I said that right. Um, she she leaves the wall without a single item. And I'm like, I know, I know. But since buying from Superbalist and also Amazon is like fantastic. I love it. You know what I love is you get all the reviews. And yeah. it's real people leaving reviews. And they say, like, I don't like this. I don't like the way my boobs fit. I don't like 
this or I do like that. And yeah, so I bought this costume after researching loads of stuff online and I read loads of reviews and this was, yeah, this was the one and it's, I'm so happy with it. I left my own review there to let people know it's fantastic. Um, how long did you wait for the costume to arrive? Um, take a look. To actually, take a look. Um, Amazon's actually really quick. And I've written a post on my website about buying from Amazon because I was very hesitant to start buying from them because it's overseas. You've got the courier. You've got the delivery time. You've got the um, import taxes, all of that. And what I love about Amazon is the delivery is actually really quick. I've had stuff that's arrived. I've ordered something on Take A Lot and I've ordered something on Amazon and the stuff arrived at the same time. I mean, it was I, super, super fast. I ordered last week, Thursday, I think. Hmm. Not last week, sorry. The previous week, Thursday, I put an order in uh, for a brand that I'm working with. Um, so their product, they're from America, so their product comes to me from Amazon. And it was only due to be here on the 9th and it arrived on Tuesday. So it was yeah. less than five days. And I mean, we had a weekend yeah. in between. So I, mean, I found that- Fantastic. Yeah, I found that their delivery service, and it was so easy to buy. I've always been mm -hmm. so hesitant to buy off Amazon. I'm just like, what's it gonna cost? And when I looked at it, it really, it, there wasn't much difference in, in pricing. Yeah, but what, what I like as well is that I've bought from overseas before and, and where did I, I bought stuff from Wish and I bought stuff from different a couple of different places. And what I didn't like is you place your order with them and includes delivery, all of that. And then it comes here and then you get the import charges and you don't yeah. know what those are going to be. So you can some, I, mean, I think there was one time I got hit and I, thought, I budgeted, okay, maybe a hundred bucks, 150 bucks it arrives and I got to pay 300 bucks to get my stuff. So with Amazon, it works slightly differently. And what happens is when you place your order, they tell you, this is the price of the item, this is the price of delivery, and this is the estimated price of your import fees. So it's yes. all included. And, and that not only does it mean that you know exactly what you're paying up front, it also means it doesn't hold it up because the other stuff goes, it gets stuck at customs. So I once had a, <clears throat> a brand from Canada um, send us something. And the product was beautiful, but it was only worth about 300 Rand. And we ended up paying 1,500 Rand to bring it into the country. So I was like, yeah, sure, I'll cover the postage. And I nearly, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, totally out of pocket there. And um, somebody asked how we, uh, Jane asked how we purchased from Amazon. I just want to say that you have to use a credit card because I couldn't put the payment through on my debit card. I ended up using Brent's credit card to, to put our payment through. Yeah, there we go. There's Jade's comment. Yeah, yeah. Um, you do use your, your card. And yeah, uh, and then about the import taxes, um, the, uh, so what, how, the, it's an estimation. So the, I think they usually overestimate, put it on that yes. side. So you pay, you pay initially, and then after the order is delivered, they reconcile and they say either you pay in or you get refunded a certain amount to your card. Um, I've only ever been refunded. I've never had to pay in. So, yeah, there's no nasty surprises. And sometimes you get money back, which is pretty cool. So it, I think it works on the, um, the exchange rates because when I went online, I had to, um, I had to put the, the, the order through get the estimate for the company to then pay for the order. Um, and then they obviously deposited the cash into my PayPal and then I paid after they, they had paid for their product. So once what we discovered was that there was a definite difference in when I actually paid on what Amazon yeah. had estimated and it had gone down. So I think it really works on the, um, on the exchange rates. Yeah, no, definitely it does. It does. Yeah. Um, Sonia says she thought buying Amazon is higher. Look, it depends on what you buy. But, yeah. you know, what I also enjoy is that they've got, if you look at our online stores and, and, and our in-store stores, if you look at the variety of stuff, Amazon has got, I mean, it's absolutely massive. And do your pricing and then just compare it. And I found often buying from Amazon, <clears throat> even though the exchange rates and the customs, all of that often works out much cheaper. And this costume, a, I think this costume, I paid about a thousand bucks 
which it sounds like a lot, but if you want a good quality costume and you want something that's going to last you for years and there's a little bit of stretch, there's a bit of room for growth in this one. <laughs> you know, if you look at it, usually, usually I would pay between three and 400 rand a costume year, um, but none of it fits. And then I bought one costume that I really liked, actually, and that was from Pick and Play Clothing, but I grew. You know, yeah. I mean? this, and so I wore it for uh, two weeks and then I grew the next season and now it's sitting in my cupboard. I've got a lovely costume that I bought for True West and paid way, way, way too much money for it at the time, but it's lasted three years. But it's also, it, it's got a very similar look to that, the little flared skirt at the bottom. So it's mm. very, very modest. It hides all my bum cellulite. And um, <laughs> if I bend, I don't shock anyone on the beach. So, you know, <laughs> it, 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 it's a good fit, but it was worth the money. And I think that's, you know, that's the difference. Thing. If you're going to be able to bend over comfortably to pick up your towel yes. and you can walk up and down the beach. And uh, uh, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Ibitisham. I'm sorry, I can't Growth. Can you... No. Um, yeah, so growth. I don't know if you're laughing at me or if you are with me. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> I think that grow year to year, it's the moms too. <laughs> Anyway. I think it's a mom thing. We just grow. It's all I love. It just makes us bigger. Oh, we've got R Raya saying her parcel never arrived and they refunded her for less than what she paid. Oh, um, gosh. I, I, I suspect that would be the same. So, you know, you pay in dollars and then you get refunded that same dollar amount, but it would be a different brand amount. So, yeah, I'm sorry to hear about that. I've never had that experience. But yeah, it's important that we all know about that. Yeah. Oh, there we got Bongeka. She bought, paid 700 Rand and custom was 109 and delivered within two weeks. Yeah, it's, it's not bad at all. Candace, every Friday is a laugh. <laughs> You've got to <laughs> laugh. You've got to be happy, lighthearted, all of that. Okay, cool. So we've done... I can tick off, boom, Berg River, and I can tick off the Safer app. So, who likes chocolate? <laughs> Don't oh, get excited. I know where you're going. going. I've got no giveaway for the chocolate, okay? But I received the drop from Cadbury yesterday, and it's actually really, really cute. So, it comes in this cool box, and it's the festive, festive greetings box. And now I want to just see if I can push my camera down like this. And when you open it up, I'm sorry, Judy, yours is still on the way, right? No, do you know where mine is? Mine went to Comic oh, yeah. and the awesome driver phoned me and he was, Judy, you don't live here anymore. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I will just rule until mine arrives. Okay, well, sorry to sorry to break the excitement. Hamish, don't look. Um, no, he's in the room. Don't get pulled by the big box. That's one thing. Cadbury's, they deliver this huge box, and the chocolate doesn't live up to the box size. <laughs> My kids are like, they know now. So, yeah, you open it up, and then it all falls like this. Ah, oh, and it's so cute. So, I got a Christmas stocking, and inside the stocking were these um, white whiskers. I love those. Ah. Oh. And then we've got the festive season range. So it's festive gingerbread. And we've got butterscotch and crushed almonds. And we've got cinnamon crunch. So we're going to take this away on our weekend. And because no, money is like so tight at the moment. And we've got this little wire Christmas tree, which is very cute. Um, yeah, my kids were moaning at me because we're going away this weekend. But the budget is, I mean, we can get there. We can eat fine. But I said, you know, when it comes to all the... Um, the nice stuff, we're going to be very limited. And then this arrived. <laughs> and have, like, you have you tasted those chocolate, uh, the Christmas range chocolates? No, not yet. Oh, my word, that gingerbread one. Can I just tell you that it is, yeah, I don't <laughs> share it, okay? <laughs> like, I, so I told Brent, Cadbury's is sending us a box. He goes, are they sending the white whispers? I was like, no. <laughs> because no. Like, those are mine. 
<laughs> don't get the, don't open the stocking, hint, hint. So don't even open the stocking. When you open it up, they want nothing in there. He's at work. Got, he's at work. I've got more than enough time to hide those things. <laughs> but the gingerbread, for me, I love gingerbread. So the gingerbread Cadbury's Christmas one is just, oh, my gosh, to die for. Well, I, I'll share I'm salivating. stories. I'll share stories on the weekend while I'm away of us all eating our chocolate. So you guys can all <laughs> jello. <laughs> I, 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 I'm just basically trying to read the comments. And somebody mentioned we all love chocolate. That's why we grow. I'm not even going to deny it. Exactly. Like, exactly. You know, I need to get that in. And then I need to get me into my costume. And that's why you need room for growth. But I've got a balanced diet. <laughs> Coffee and chocolate. Exactly. There go. <laughs> 100%. Okay, so what is next? We've got, I've done number one. What's number two? Number two. Ooh, tickets for the gift fair. So let me. Um, okay. Oh, my thing came out a bit squiffy. Okay, so. I just want to say the tickets arrive at me on the 15th. So I do have the emails of the other ladies. I did email them. Um, and when their tickets arrive in my inbox, I will send them through. Okay. One, two, one tickets. So we got two tickets. I don't know why I didn't make this banner. Two. Okay, and that's in Cape Town only. That's in Cape Town. So we need two Cape Town moms who want to attend the gift fair. It happens at the CTICC and it happens between Friday the 26th and um, the, the Sunday the 28th. And it is all local, uh, mostly handmade gifts. And it's such a great place to go and do your Christmas shopping and support local. Awesome. So ladies, come tell us about your Christmas shopping and, you know, if you want to get some Have you to go to the gift fair. Have you started shopping, Lynn? <sighs> I'm no. going to take that as a no. <laughs> you know, I find the end of the year so stressful. So I've got my daughter's birthday at the end of November. My son's birthday is on the 20th of December. And what I do is I have a joint birthday party in the middle of November. Because if I have a party in December for my son, nobody's there because they've all gone away. So I have to have his birthday before the school holidays start, which means I basically have to have it in November. My daughter's at the end of October. I'm not doing two parties within one month. So I, middle of November, I throw a joint party for both of them. So last week was my daughter's birthday. Next week is their joint birthday party. Then we've got exams. Then we've got my son's birthday. Then it's my father-in-law's birthday two days later. Three days later, it's Christmas. I... I'm sorry, I, I I scramble. I like this time of the year, I, my head is like scrambled eggs. I don't know what I'm doing. And my kids are like, what's this? What's that? I'm like, we're going away to Burger River today. Forget about your party, forget about your birthday, forget about your plan. <laughs> just don't like, don't go there. We're just gonna get away. We're gonna come back and then I'm gonna start planning your birthday party. I sent the invites out, I've done nothing for next week. Well, and then I have I do that, and then we'll get through the exam, and then we'll get to like, I just, it's so much. Every year I say, January, I'm going to buy on the sales, and I'm going to put the stuff away, and I'm going to buy throughout the year. <laughs> and Christmas will, every year I say it. Have I done it once? No. But <laughs> I also, <laughs> I think every year October comes, I'm like, handmade this year. Let me just make, I'm creative. I can do this. Mm. Let me bake and sew and cook and November happens and I haven't done anything. No, exactly. And then I rush in the last two weeks before Christmas and I'm like, what do I buy this <laughs> lot? Now, realistically, I've got seven children. So oh. some of them have partners. Um, then there's the in-laws, not to mention the grannies and the Okay, so like when, then you look again and you're buying for half a country. So, <laughs> so we have this really small budget. Like, and each year it gets smaller. And Hamish's Christmas present's been organized. Okay, so that is yeah. done. But I mean, that's but, a, a young kid. So, I mean, that's. Well, well, this is it. But this year I decided I'm gifting experiences to everyone. 
that's it. You're all getting an experience. Mm. So I'm going to buy, like, a, my one son and his girlfriend are really, really active. So I'm going to buy them an activity that they can go and do together. My eldest oh, daughter is lovely. married to her. Yeah, married with her husband. So, like, uh, my, my son's got a little girl, so I'm going to get them something they can do as an activity together. And I think that gifting someone an experience, which becomes a memory, is a lot better. My it. kids are older. They don't need toys. They don't need gifts. They can buy their own stuff. In fact, they should be buying me a lot more stuff, I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so this year I've decided they're all getting an experience. And I'm probably not going to make those handmade cookies for my neighbors like I thought I was. <laughs> <laughs> what I do for Christmas is as soon as I'm over all the other stuff, I go out, I get my two kids gifts. And as long as I've got that, the rest can fall apart. It's just my husband, my parents, my sister, you know, and, and as long as my kids have got their gifts, the rest can go. I've got my tree. I've got my decorations. I just need to get two gifts or four because Santa and a couple of stocking fellows. And once I've got that, then I'm cool. And, you know, so, yeah. I have to no, buy a new tree. I'm not prepared. I'm not prepared have... even for my daughter, my kid's birthday party next week. I, it's, it's a process. Over time, I'll update you next week on how I'm doing. <laughs> I've got to buy a new tree this year, Lynn, because oh. in our move, my tree was broken. And oh, if you've yeah. been watching my – anywhere on social media, you will notice that I have a habit of flooding my flat here. I had so, <laughs> Yeah, so my, wash, my washing machine outlet pipe seems to be holding way too much water for my sink, and it just just overflows – and my Christmas decorations just happen to be in one of the um, – under the counter. And it was just water. And I just took one look at this and I went, goodbye, I love you. And I was just – I was over it because I actually walked in and I'd flooded this thing for like the 97th time and I didn't know if I should cry or make a TikTok. So what I did was I skipped <laughs> back. I grabbed some towels. I made a TikTok and let Hamish swim on the floor. Made coffee, left the mess. Had the coffee and went back to clean up. <laughs> no, I, I, I looked at your thing, your your post on social media, and I thought, "What? You flooded your kitchen again?" I just don't. I don't. It get seems it. Yes, so. We've got we've got two outlet pipes, and the bright sparks who lived here before us seem to have blocked up one of the um, the outlets. And bear in mind, we rent our flats, so it's not like we can just go like drill holes or you know bash it mm. apart and make it ours. Mm. Um, so I'm kind of have to work with what we've got. And it seems I, I've kind of discovered that when I'm putting a large load on, my little sink is obviously too small for um, for the water load. Yes. So I now need to either cut the, the loads and only do half loads, or I need to push the washing machine to the bathroom, our, our small bathroom, where we Each have load. an open, yeah, where we have an open shower. And just let the flipping thing drain through there. You know, like, I don't know, but that's next week's problem. This week, I'm just going to have coffee. <laughs> and my job. Yeah, I just, but Hamish was thrilled. He was like, I get to swim on the kitchen floor. This is so cool. There he was in his little undies, splashing about, and I was like, where to go? <laughs> oh, totally. Okay, so ladies, do we need, we need some Cape Town moms? Yes. When I, when I see some Cape there Town moms, some. I'm going to call won some tickets last week and she's looking for another two, I think, for her husband and her her mom to go with. So um, do you want to do that? Sorry? Nicole. She won last yes, week. Yes, I can do I'm that. Not, I can't moms unless I'm missing something here. So um, Nicole wants – where is it? Um, okay, I'm getting all confused again. Nicole. Nicole, Nicole, Nicole wants to win. You know Nicole. Nicole, congratulations. I know Nicole. Thank Nicole, you. let me just set them to you, Nicole. Because I can't see anyone else. Sorry, guys. Yeah. But, Nicole, I will pop them all to you as soon as they come into my inbox on the 15th. Yeah. I do have your details. So, I want to show you what arrived. Judy, you saw my stories. <gasps> I am so jealous. Absolutely, absolutely jealous. Uh, Just I'm saying. I'm 20 soon, apparently. <laughs> I saw that empty wrinkle stuff and I was like, I'm there. 
Like, can I oh. lather it on? When you come to my kid's birthday party next weekend, I'll slap some on you. Okay. Oh, this sounds awesome. Can you slap so enough on for me to lose my, like half a kg here? <laughs> So I got this beautiful box arrived yesterday. Let's figure out how to open it without breaking it. Where is the opening? Oh, I put it the wrong way around. Okay, so it's Heida Labo Tokyo. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correct. And it's beauty products. Look how pretty everything is. So we've got all of these. Oh. oh. Now, let me put my camera it's up. such there. pretty packaging, Lynn. I know. So I've got the hydrating like, cleanser all in one. I've got the lotion, anti-aging super hydrator. Not that I'm old, but I could always do with some anti-wrinkle stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've got the another lotion, super hydrator. I'm gonna that one looks that interesting. On my next week. Eye and mouth area cream, day and night, deep wrinkle corrector. So now I'm wondering, I've spoken before, like, that really gets me is these little wrinkles around my mouth. You know, when you were younger and you go, and you look so hot, now it looks like a dog's bottom. <laughs> all the little wrinkles. <laughs> so maybe this will fix that. I'm sorry, that's just... It's just I have to find... No, I've got to find an eye cream because I'm going to say that... It's because I um, I smile, but I don't think so. It's because my kids have driven me crazy. But yes, so <laughs> I've got some oh, wrinkles. Oh. It's because you're a happy person. And then I've got the intense hydrating skin plumping gel. Lovely. And they got such beautiful packaging. It's so it looks so amazing. It looks so um high end stuff. It looks really high end. Anti aging oval V lift hydro cream. Oh, that does look mm. pretty. Anti-aging wrinkle reducer day cream. Yo, you see, as I was looking at all these anti-aging things, I was like, yes, yes. We can have a pamper party, Judy. Not sure. Okay, so and then I also got a journal. Oh, which is really nice. So um, I love journals. Yay! We can enjoy. never have enough journals. I've still got to write my review on that, that I'm going to hopefully get to next week before the party. So, yeah, I'll be writing a review on this when I've had a chance to really use the products. And I'll beg the PR company, I'll say, please, please give us products to give away. So I don't, I haven't, there hasn't been a discussion of any giveaway, but um, yeah, this, this would be amazing for anybody. I haven't opened it. I haven't smelt it. Um, smelling this stuff is really important for me. I love you know, when you open it up and you can smell How it. How have you not opened it yet? Lynn, you have got so much willpower. Lynn has got way more willpower than me. Like, the stuff gets in and I'm in there. <laughs> <laughs> because I have been scrambling. Life has been so... No, crazy. I hear you. Really crazy. And, yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's just been really, really busy. And I wanted to leave it for next week when I'm back. You know, the thing is, when my mind is all over the place, I think I'd like to try this, but I've got this and I've got this and I've got this. I like to get that stuff out of my way. And I just want to go away for the weekend, come back. You know, when you come back and you need a holiday after a holiday, and then I can sit down and I oh, can yes. relax and I can lather myself up with all the stuff. Um, that's that's my thing. So I am... Yeah, so this weekend we don't have we didn't have a car because our car's gone in to be fixed up because it's at that five year stage and Brent wants to sell it and get something else. So Brent is driving his company Bucky. Now you cannot put a five year old in a company Bucky, which means we've kind of been housebound. And um, so this weekend I was like, I'm not going to do anything. And we actually took a walk down to the beach all together. So it's normally just Hamish and I, but we went with Brent. And then of course we went boating. But we had to drop Hamish off at his sister, and they had a bit of a stomach bug, but she thought it was food poisoning. Oh. So I was like, okay, well, it's fine. So I dropped him off. So Monday, Hamish had the worst fever that you can leave, which means I got nothing done Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I finally got to work. And yesterday was like, oh my gosh, this is just wait, you know, like I'm not even getting anywhere. So, yeah, that was my week. 
But did you say so you voted? You of course did. I voted. One of us is still trying to get this. Uh, oh, I've got a tiny my... bit left in my thumb. But I mean, how's the way that the whole national system went down? So I, I, I missed that. In the morning, I was there at about nine and I might get this done. And the queue was so short. There was maybe 10 people standing outside. And as I parked my car, the heavens opened and, a, and I thought, I really, I can't, I can't stand here in the cold, get drenched and go inside. Yeah. So I came back home and I don't have an umbrella. So I had to WhatsApp my neighbor for an umbrella, but he wasn't home because he was waiting in the queue with his umbrella, apparently. So by the time he got home and gave me an umbrella and then I had a cup of coffee and I had a little rest and I went back and the queue was like, Woo. so I stood in the queue for an hour and a half. And as I got close to the front, the system went down. And oh, I'm wow. like, yeah, no, we the whole thing went down. Um, on the bright side, half the people in front of me decided they're not going to wait. I just sat there. Okay, well, that's good. Wait. It didn't take too long, and then they went manual. So then another 20 minutes, half an hour was in, and I did my vote. Yeah. But it was like, I just wonder how many people actually went back, you know? Are you losing us? I've lost your sound, Judy. Oh, no, just... No, my sound is good. You just didn't want to hear Hamish. Sorry. Um, <laughs> no, we we had a really we had a really really easy um, voting. It was really quick. Um, it was raining, so we went to about ten o'clock. Um, we were still Hamish, stop please. We were still registered with um, the same place where we were where we registered previously. Um, we walked in, and it was literally not even twenty minutes, and we were done. But I, wanted, I had wanted to originally take Hamish with so that I could explain the whole voting process to him. And yeah. the minute I saw that rain, I was like, rain and cues, it's not going to happen. No, exactly. If I had an umbrella, it would have been fine. But, I mean, then I wasted, like, half my day standing there. I, look, I vote. I always vote. I don't always know who yeah. to vote for. But I get my butt down there and I do it anyway because, you know, our country, we can all agree, is a bit of a mess. And if you don't vote, I mean, how are we going to make changes? And my husband said, because I don't actually follow politics very much, but he said that a lot of the smaller parties got a lot of votes, which, yeah. you know. I was, I was quite, quite impressed that there was um, a party called Action SA I'd never heard of, and they now have one of the, um, they have Newcastle or something. And I was quite impressed because from what I could tell, they were quite new. And I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't do the whole let's talk politics. Um, but we vote. We vote every time there's a vote. And our biggest reason for voting is I cannot sit and gripe about anything in our country if I haven't been willing to step up and say what I care about. My vote is yeah. that. Yeah. Well, that's it. And I was quite happy to see that a lot of the small, sm smaller parties, parties did well. I'm getting my twisties going. Um, you know, the thing is, it, it just seems to be a general consensus. You vote ANC or DA. And if you don't want ANC, yeah. you vote DA. And if you don't want DA, you vote ANC. And that's not, you know, and so many people said they're not voting because they don't, they've don't. they got nobody to vote for. You know, and if these smaller parties get more, you know, so you're actually voting for what you believe in rather than trying to keep the party out that you want to keep out. It's, it's I, really I, I think that's the biggest thing. My, my two cents and only my opinion is that in South Africa, we've got way too much monopoly of certain things. Um, ESCOM is my biggest gripe right now. I feel like oh. if we if we as a country had alternative energy, exactly. ESCOM would need to up their service. And I really believe that. And something yeah. that upset me was load shedding to kill your business prior to voting. We'll stop so that you can vote, but hold on, let's give you load shedding afterwards again. I mean, like, if you people can judge your schedules like that, you can get your shit together and sort out the hour. Like, just, so, <laughs> you know, I'm just, just putting that out there. <laughs> yeah, totally. We've got some amazing comments coming on. Yeah. Yeah, there yeah. was very few people who voted um, this year. Really? But I think a yeah. lot of it might have been that, that national tech problem, you know? Because like but I said, when, when, when the system went down, Half the people just got up and left, you know. But I, was, I was looking at this thinking, like, I don't know how long it's going to take for me to get my vote in, but I'm not prepared to leave because I want my vote in. But how many of those people came back? I, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. But the thing is also, I think what, what really happened is 
Previously, you always see quite a big hype about the voting. And I don't know, I didn't see that much hype this year. I really didn't from any of the parties. Like I did not see the same kind of hype that you've seen in previous years. And no. I, I noticed that they let you vote online, which I heard about on Sunday night after the voting was finished. And I was like, who, who said you could vote? I would have voted online. Are you serious? Oh, I don't know who was allowed to vote, but there was some special special concessions made for certain people. And I was like, why can't we all just vote online? That would be amazing, especially the people that have to travel yeah, far I mean, away. But also, it would open up so many new avenues for those who can't get out of, of where they're at. Older people who, and our country is still such a huge country without transport. So many people sit without transport. They have Wi-Fi because we all have cell phones, but they still yeah. don't have, uh, you know, they have data is what I'm trying to say. And companies like um, Pick and Pay and uh, Vodacom and MTM have got a no data policy where you can do schooling for free Use it. You don't need data. You can use your cell phone yeah. to do it. And so okay. does the SASA grants. So those who are collecting the 350 SASA grants or, um, you know, you know, the 350 our government have given us, they also use a specific app, which doesn't require data. So we could have done the same thing. We could have voted online using a non-data um, app that yeah. anyone could have access to. We live yeah, in 2021, and I think our politicians need to get it together. Yeah, shoes. Well, I mean, Von Gecker here is saying in Davytown, a lot of places have no water for three days before voting, yeah. so they clean for water instead of for votes. That's, it, you know, it's, it's such a mess. But this is also it. I mean, realistically, I would like to see our politicians in that space where there's no water going, oh, crap, this is your problem. This is how we're going to mm. fix it. I'll vote for you. I'm there. Yeah. You are hands in and you're helping somebody. You've got my vote. But when you're yeah. sitting behind a TV screen and you're telling me what you plan to do, probably no, I don't have my vote. No, exactly. Exactly. There's a lot of talk and not so much doing. See, this is why Lynn and I are not in politics. <laughs> no, no I, I, I'm not. I don't, I don't follow politics. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's it, yeah, Candace, that's exactly what I was going to say. It's so frustrating. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, talking about convenience and online, the couple in front of me, very young couple with a with a, a young baby, maybe four months, five months, and they stood in that queue with me. Now I'm standing in the queue alone, it's one thing, but standing with a baby in the wind and everything and a little bit of drizzle trying to get your vote in. Um you know, it's, it's, that is not easy. If you can do it online, so many more people would vote. And the I young have people. I to say, I was, that's the other yeah, thing I was I very impressed. I was one of the youngest people in the queue, except for the people who were the baby. It's a mosquito I mean, or, so a, 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 mosquito or a, a bee. Okay. It's either a mosquito Sorry, or everyone. Or Hamish, then go watch, watch TV, love. Off you go. No, this thing is alive. Go tell Ronan. Thank you. I'm, I'm live. Thanks. <laughs> um, what something I did notice, sorry everyone, something I did notice was that, um, he's still there. something I did notice was that the older people were being taken to the front where we vote, yes, our voting yeah. station, they were, and they had chairs and everything, and the pregnant women were also given concession. They did take those, and I noticed like those with disabilities and that, so I have to say that overall, the people running the station that we attended. And previously, yeah. I know the last time we voted, I was pregnant with Hamish. And they walked right up to me and said, please go in. And I so Brent stood in the line. Yeah, but I got to go in. So I think there's definitely, but that's a human thing. I mean, we, you know, that's that's not a politician thing. That's, that's just human nature. You're going to let those go ahead. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And what I liked as well is when I went to go vote, the chap that I was voting for, Andre Twitter, for mayor, for Saldana, he was there. And he was there the whole day, chatting to people, organizing, getting the old people. You know, he's the one that, that, that you know, running for mayor. And he's helping the little old ladies to the front and organizing stuff, updating us on the tech problem, um, chatting to everybody, what do you want to see? 
what can I help you with? What can I focus on? It was it was nice to have that personal touch. Such a nice guy. But um, that's what you want. You want someone who's going to be hands on, mm. feeling what the people are feeling. You don't want somebody who is so detached from the people that they're going to help. You know, because they can't relate to you. Yeah, totally. So let's see. Um, what have we I'm going to put you on mute to ask Ronan to put the TV on. Hold on. Okay, no problem. So let's see, what have we got next? Oh, I've got a spelling mistake. Give me a second. And then okay, I can put Thanks, guys. Um, so the next is, we've been doing a lot of soft lips, but I really, really love soft lips. It is a fantastic product. Uh, let me just share my screen over here. I um, lost my soft lips this week. It's in Brent's car. Oh, no. Okay. No, so he took one look and he went, oh, I'll have this. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing it's mint. <laughs> yeah, totally. So we've got a, um, a giveaway for one raspberry rush, one bronze, one French vanilla, one strawberry sherbet, and one rose. So, yeah, um, some of you comments if you like soft lips, what you guys do to look after your lips in summer. We all need this right now. And we could put pick you as one of our winners just go back to my oh what did i do i did something funny okay we're back here um yeah i love soft lips and my favorite are the tinted ones because yes, i'm because... not a makeup person much you know and it's just you 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 have the lip balm and you can put it on and it covers your lips as well which i really love I, I like it because I often forget to wear lipstick. So oh, that's it. The, yeah. yeah. I like lip like now. Always have it on me. Mm. So my lipstick is here, and I was like, "Oh, I must put some on before the." <laughs> 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 it's still over there. <laughs> it's okay. I don't mind. I I really no. So. We've got Kurosa saying she hates dry lips, so she keeps them moisturized, her obsession. Uh, Rebecca, you also love the tinted ones. Yeah, it makes you look like you've put a bit of effort in <laughs> on the days when you have it. <laughs> Mom hack. <laughs> you heard it here first. Just <laughs> Yeah, Marty loves the oh so heavenly lip balm. I haven't tried that one. Oh, some... No, it's Hamish. Yeah. <laughs> You've got Sandwich, so you always use blue oh, butter. Oh, can you hear it? Oh, okay, no. hold on. Yeah. Sorry. Um, blue butter. She would love to try soft lips. I don't know what blue butter is. I'm not familiar with that at all. So you can tell us about that. Um, definitely a mom hack. Yeah, totally. And also, uh, Rebecca, I was told in one of the live videos, I can't remember by who, that she puts um, lip balm on first and then she puts her lipstick on and it makes it, you know, a lot more um consistent and 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 lacquer so i've been doing that now and it's definitely makes a bit of a difference and we've got a knock of tula not into makeup so she loves soft lips yeah i'm really into um the more natural look and that's what i like about the soft lips tinted it's not like this um you know very harsh lipstick marty what's blue butter yeah i want to know what blue butter is you know you got your thing yeah there. i'm back i'm back sorry what's blue butter someone said they use blue butter i don't know what i don't know is. what that is i think sandra said it's blue butter yeah oh, there we go blue butter i'm gonna google it quickly because i don't know what it is oh, wait hold on blue butter from hercules lynn it's in a small container like that of zambak okay. oh okay that's interesting nice <laughs> jade saying everyone's going crazy for for the soft lips it's a really stunning product absolutely divine so yeah okay um jade you're gonna win the soft lips today i've just written your name down don't forget to inbox me on kaboki facebook page and then i can arrange that for you uh Croatia uses vaseline before she puts her, lip her lipstick on that's also awesome vaseline's fantastic The only reason I don't use Vaseline is because to me it's a bit oily. 
Ah. Oh. So I have all these sensory issues and I just find it a bit too oily for me. Yeah. Okay, I, yeah, I'm not fond of Vaseline. I don't know why. No, mine's just because I find it oily. I use Vaseline when I dye my hair. I put Vaseline around yes. here and cover my ears because I'm a real klutz. <laughs> If I don't do that, then my heart, like, you're going to not dyed my hair. I, I have natural highlights where I've forgotten to put some dye. Okay. Yeah, no, that's yeah, So the darker I go and the more time, it'll just cover it. <laughs> I need to do that. So if I bend over and there's a streak, yes, it was intentional. <laughs> I, I'm going to I'm gonna out you, though, what you did, was it last week or the week before? She didn't dye her hair. She mascara her grey out. Okay, so, <laughs> so I just want to tell you, if you have dark hair, okay, and you are going grey, something I just, I have a few hacks for you, okay, is if you need to be seen live, online, or in a photo, and you don't have time to dye your hair, your mascara will match your hair colour, and it works. <laughs> but this has natural highlights because she's got short arms. <laughs> This is the problem. I'm like a T-Rex. I just can't get there. <laughs> and Iman wants to know, what age did you start dyeing your hair? I started oh. with my teen. I yeah, just, I was... Something about dyeing hair. I was 15, and I had a friend who was studying hairdressing, and she was like, let's peroxide your hair. And, of course, hello, that's what you did, right? So we just kept pouring peroxide mm -hmm. in my hair. And um, I have dyed my hair every six weeks since. And um, last year, when lockdown, well, not last year, when lockdown started, I stopped dyeing my hair. I did not dye my hair for over a year then. And the gray was looking gray, people. Um, listen, like, those seven kids have, have wisdomed my hair quite a bit. And um, <laughs> with, yeah, it's wisdom lights. It's not gray. Um, and I didn't dye my hair for a year. I cut it really, really short, didn't dye it. Um, and my biggest reason was my hair was looking bad and there was just no yeah. product that was going to fix that. And I needed to grow my hair back out and I needed it to become healthy again because I was literally, I wasn't happy with my hair. And so I sat for an entire year, and I have to tell you, many of the times I did not feel pretty, and I didn't want to be in the photo because I knew what it looked like. And then, what, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I finally dyed it. After promising to do it like a month ago. But, yeah, okay. Yeah, but I, I time, time, to get time. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I, as much as I dye it, I don't like to dye it all the time anymore. I find yeah. that even if I'm using a good product, my hair isn't feeling as happy. Yeah. Canvas recommends Amla shampoo. I haven't heard of that, but I'll check it out. No, I'm I using haven't. What do you I'm use on your hair currently? A John Frieda. And I'm really like okay, I use I'm a blonder and I'm using the purple range. It's really good. I, I use like organics. I've been using organics for years. Listen, I'm a I am a, a creature of habits so I just use the same thing I always use and I've decided to come out of my comfort zone and start trying other products don't know how well that's going to work but let's try um but I use organics well you can try John Frieda but it doesn't cost what organics costs I warn you right now it's it's quite pricey but I don't use it all the time I use Tresem as well and then I mix it up because Tresem it's the same price, but the Tresem bottle is like this and the John Fried is like this. <laughs> but, but that's the thing is, I like, I like to try different things. I really do by nature. I just don't always get there because like when I'm in the shop, my, my thought is not, Judy, your hair needs to look amazing this week. My thought is usually, oh, I think Hamish has run out of shampoo. Do the boys need shampoo for their room? Um, have we still got conditioner? Because somehow the shampoo and the conditioner never use up at the same time. What's with that? I always have half a bottle of shampoo. Tresemme. Oh, well, I'm one of those moms. I, I pronounce things wrong. I'm not with the crowd. <laughs> is it the, the Tresemme is the, the, it's the black bottle? Yeah, We're black and yes. white. Hold on, I'll grab it. Yeah. So. Has anyone used 
those um hell the, the capsules that you put in your hair i don't know what they're called um but it's supposed to be like an oil treatment oil treatment what no i was just asking if anyone had used like an oil treatment i'm desperate to try an oil treatment in my hair uh so mm -hmm. when i that hot oil stuff i don't know yes yeah, so i used to use years. hot oil years ago yeah so these yes are tresemme used. and then my purple one is actually finished but i've got the the john frieda go blonder one okay which is really nice because that kind of keeps my hair going blonder after i've dyed it I I think there, there's those ellipse ones um i'm not sure what they cost or like if they're any good everyone seems to rave about them but i haven't tried them yet i do mm -hmm. know again another um yeah placenta capsules yeah here we go. another mom hack if like this is a mom who's lived for years on very little um if you don't have the cash to go and buy expensive hot oil treatments and stuff you can use tissue oil so you can wash your hair and before you put uh, before you put the conditioner on you can put tissue oil on your hair then rinse it off properly and then put a conditioner on yeah okay that makes it incredibly soft oh shazam clarissa I, the shazam oil. I haven't tried that one but I no like i haven't it. either mm. oh we got amla oil as well works really well the green bottle Okay. Awesome. Thank you. I'm definitely going to try. Okay. So now, Judy, I must get you to try this as well. Um, yes. What am I trying? I like this. She says, I must get you to try this. And I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. Let's yeah, go. Yeah. What I, I don't even know what I'm trying. Right. Just wait. My kids tell me I start talking and I stop mid sentence and they're standing waiting. Like, no, I was just talking in general. No, I mean, like our personalities. Lynn goes, try it. I'm like, yeah, sure. I don't know what I'm signing up for, but yes, let's do it. <laughs> okay, I don't know what's going on with my banners. Um, I thought I made them nicely, and now maybe I've got a limit to the amount of banners I can put on. I don't know. Um, one A, one hundred gram. Okay, and what are we trying? Live game. Save. Show. There we go. And now yes. I'm going to see my screen. I'm getting so much better at this. I really am. Okay, so Life Gain is an advanced nutritional supplement, and I received a lovely hamper from them. It included the um, so the normal supplement. It included one junior one. It included a meal replacement shake, and it included the recovery and the repair with glutamine. So, um, join in the discussion about nutrition and health and all of that. Yep. I've got this is my favorite one, so it's chocolate, chocolate flavored. And I've Didn't got you say they did a coffee one? There's a cappuccino, which is yes. really really great. So I, well, the chocolate, I, I love the cappuccino, um, but I like to have that not as regularly, but partly because the chocolate's the big tin, and the other one I've got the the three hundred gram <laughs> gram tins. So I'm using the chocolate. I love chocolate. I just Chocolate for me and coffee is absolutely fantastic. So what we're giving away is a 100 gram tin of the adult formula. Okay. Um, and no, I've really loved it. You know, remember I got sick a while back and I was feeling so, so ill and I like felt a little bit better just in time for the video. And um, yeah, that week I couldn't eat. The thought of food made me feel sick. I could only stomach liquids. And I got out my life game and I had that for most of the week. And it really, it helped me keep my energy levels up, my strength up. Um, and I really think it helped me recover. Uh, we've got somebody saying, oh, I thought it was for older people. Yes. Advanced support. No, advanced as in like super, but I think super support. Um, and they marketed towards, I don't know where the thing is now. Um, it's, for, yes, they marketed towards old people. Um, people that are ill, people that are hospitalized, people that are stuff here. Uh, surgery, injury, hospitalization, illness, and age. And I want to add on there, moms. <laughs> because, because we are know, aged and ill. You have to get that nutrition and what you need in, in a quick, sort of easy way. Yeah. Um, 
you know, I find sometimes there's just days where I'm so busy with, especially if the kids are out and they've got sport, but they come home late in the afternoon and because I'm not preparing meals for them, I'm just on the go and I'm doing this and doing that. I only cook when it's <laughs> family. And then I get to like, and I suddenly realize I haven't eaten a thing and I've got to get my kids and I've got to rush and I've got this, this, this. And then I can have a meal replacement shake, just, you know, grab it and jump in the car. So, but yeah, for me, it's been absolutely fantastic. This is where I was at Wednesday and Thursday because I, like the whole week went bad. Wednesday, it's five o'clock. I was starving, Lynn. Absolutely mm. starving. I work from home. My fridge is literally in the other room. And I realized I fed Hamish the entire day. He probably had about 300 meals and two 2,000 snacks. I'd yeah. not eaten. And I literally got to five o'clock and realized I'd not eaten anything. 100%. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we've got Marlene asking, can you lose weight on it? Um, look, I, I'm not big into weight loss stuff. I mean, I'd love to lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually have lost about two kilos in the last month, which is really fantastic. I've been focusing on eating prop, uh, properly and, um, you know, and I think, you know, where this comes in is I think, you know, like Judy said, you don't eat the whole day. Then what do you do? You go shopping. And what do you do? Yeah. Donuts and sausage rolls. And then I pack everything in and I scoop all this like high carb stuff because I, it's it's going to make me feel better. So you've got Iman also asking, um, has it helped you lose weight? Look, I've lost two kilos in the last month, but I've been sick. I've been stressed. I've been really on the go and I've been taking this. So but it was, I think it really helped me fill that gap between needing nutrition on the go, but I'm not, I'm, they're not marketing themselves as weight loss. So, yeah. But also, I, I think, I think with, with regards to weight loss, it starts with your nutrition because I eat really, really bad. Okay. I don't eat a lot. My bum will differ, but I don't eat a lot. So I yeah. eat really small portions and I eat really well. My diet is incredibly healthy. I uh, eat a lot of fruits and veg. I eat hardly any meats. I, I don't eat bread. So um, when, it, when it comes to that, my biggest problem and my biggest thing to do with, with weight loss is I'm not eating three meals a day. So mm. my, my, my meals aren't consistent. So my metabolism is going, oh, she's given us some food and it's just not losing. So something like this, um, it can definitely get your nutrition on a better um, and your, your diets you're eating better because that's one of the biggest mm. steps to weight loss if you're if you have a really bad eating schedule you're never going to lose any of that weight. yeah and then it messes with your blood sugar levels and that messes yeah. with your weight um yeah i find if i let myself go too hungry for too long then i start eating all the wrong things and i'm craving all the crap basically um and that's that's never good so yeah i have found it really awesome also when i went up 22 waterfalls when i climbed up the height you know i, I hike often but it's not climbing usually. It's a hike. So it might be steep, but it's not climbing. And I climbed. And then when I got back from my weekend away, I'm like, whoo, <laughs> I can feel the burn. <laughs> <laughs> my husband went up to Waterfall 11. He's like, how come you're feeling the strain? I went up to number 11. I feel nothing. And I'm like, what if? <laughs> yeah, but but then I could. Was repair and recovery. And I really felt myself feeling, you know, like a good pickup. So, yeah, I've written the review on my website. And you can also win, a, I'm getting confused now. I think there's three gram of the 100 grams that you can win on my website if you enter on the review. So you can go check that out. So I've written a lot about it. And yeah, it's been, I, I've really enjoyed it. And my kids like it as well. And, and that's the other thing. I've got the junior supplement. And I don't know how you guys feel about kids and their eating, but like, what the hell? Some days they eat like pigs and then the next day they don't eat anything all and the next day they will eat, but they'll only eat this, they won't eat that. And it's like, it drives me up the wall. So I've made them a shake. They really enjoyed it. And I also, the other day, they weren't eating very well, but they just wanted to eat the yogurt. So I'm like, I'm going to have yogurt. I'm going to slip this in and mix it up, <laughs> you know? And then I, I've got that peace of mind. I, I don't know. When my kids don't eat well, I get this, I get very but anxious also, and worried. But also your kids are at school. So like Hamish is at home. So if he doesn't eat at eight, mm. I can let him eat at quarter past eight while we're busy doing, exactly. doing something. But I think that would be, I, I know 
with my other kids, I had one with a really bad appetite. Now he eats like a pig. But then he never ate anything. And a shake or a smoothie or something mm. in the mornings that he could take to school with him, it just yeah. gave me that peace of mind that he wasn't sitting there and his blood sugar going down and and stuff. No. I like to slide in the morning yogurt before school. So I know no matter what happens, they've got a good boost for the day. Yeah. So, yeah, we've got Iman saying that she's only seen good reviews regarding Life Game. Um, fantastic. I'm going to give you a tin of 100 grams. So you can try it out maybe next week. Well, I don't know when you receive it. Maybe next week, the week after, you can let us know how it worked for you. Um, Iman, just inbox me on my Facebook page and I'll get back to you soon on that. Cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. So let's see. Did I write your name down? I did as well. Oh, one thing I wanted to share about. Let me take my banner off. Um, I've spoken a number of times about the, uh, the Checker 60 app, which I absolutely love. And I wrote a review on it a while back. But there was one dance, there, there were a couple of negatives and I did pros and cons, but the one con that really stood out for me is that they they didn't have the checkers extra saving card linked, you know. So when they're running specials, it didn't work you out use, great to use the app because then you miss out. So then I'd have to go into the shop to go and get it. Um, whoops, Iman, it's a pleasure. Uh, yeah, so yesterday, or was it the day before? I can't remember because my brain gets fuzzy by Friday. And it was two, two days ago. Recently, <laughs> recently, that's correct. Um, I got a notification from Checkers saying you could link the extra savings cards. I'm like on my app and I've linked it and the specials are going to come through soon. So I've updated my review and I am so happy that they finally done that. They really they really needed that. And I love, I love Checkers 6060. It's just such an awesome app. It saved my bacon so many times. Um, I'm glad they got it in your area. They're slowly increasing all over. Yeah. So that's fantastic. In, yeah, they, when I stayed in Komiki, I couldn't get anything. There was nothing. They do oh, not really? deliver to Komiki. They were not, not checkers. Like no one real delivered to Komiki. So all of my favorite food places just did not deliver there. So we found a fabulous uh, pizzeria in Newark that delivered. And we found Checkers 6060. I mean, take a lot and couriers and everything deliver. But so my go to was Checkers 6060 if I wanted something or this wonderful pizzeria. Well, if you if stuff doesn't get delivered to your area, you must try Saldana. <laughs> try the <laughs> no. pizza. I'm, you just forget about it. <laughs> yes. No, no, no. no. I'm, it comes to me. But I'm in Blue Water Bay. If you are further in Saldana, like a friend of mine, um, also called Lynn, so she's like right in Saldana, don't deliver there. No, you that would me? break my heart. They are, they are spreading and, and, and moving. I, I think one of my biggest reasons for moving back to Table View was because I really, really missed deliveries. Yeah, I would kill to get takeaways delivered here. Like but it just doesn't happen. Um, I'm going to try and think of what the pizzeria's name is because I'm bad with names. I can forget them. As si I'm going to Google it right now and I'm going to tell you who it is. It's, um, now it's going to bug me. It's going to bug you. Candace. I it live is. in a beautiful, beautiful place. I absolutely love where I live. Um, you know, yes, I don't get takeaways delivered, but I'm right on the beach. And it's beautiful. It's quite safe. It's a stunning place to bring up children. Absolutely beautiful. Rebecca, which, come on, Judy, get it. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm getting there, guys. I'm so bad with names. Okay, they are amazing, but I'm going to tell you why they're amazing. Okay, as you answer the phone, there's this vibey, amazing young guy, which was always a guy, that answers the phone with, hey, I'm here to serve you pizza and I want to take your order. And I'm just like, yes, of course, have all my money. And then mm -hmm. their pizzas have the most crazy names, but like all local names. They also, they arrive in these little motorbikes and they drop off your pizza with you and their pizza is hot and it is delicious. Two of the things they did. One of the first things when I ordered from them was they had printed games on the top of your pizza. Friday night Ooh. is family night. It's pizza, right? Oh, now you have pizza and a game to play with your family. 
Loved it. I bought extra pizzas because I wanted one of each game. This is me. This is how I waste my money. Um, the next thing they did was they played um, rock, paper, scissors as they delivered to you. And they raised money for the, um, the community while playing rock, paper, scissors. I'm sorry, I will support, and for the life of me, I can't think of their names. Just hold on, guys. Um, I will support that. Anyway, if there is a small business out there that is going out of their way to be different, extra, amazing, fantastic, let me tell you, we ordered from them very regularly. And I haven't been in, in Komiki for quite a while now. <laughs> but um, we ordered from them regularly, and I would not order from anyone else because I just love their service. I'm just laughing, Judy, because when we, whenever we do the lives, like there's a, something I know, but it just won't get into my brain, a name of yes. something or a person or a, so now it's your turn. I'm enjoying it. No, this. I can't think of it. I'll give it to you all before the end of this. Listen, pizza is part of my life. My wedding, the, the food at my wedding was at a pizzeria and it was literally eat all you like pizza. When we celebrate something as a family, we do it with pizza. Uh, for as long as I can remember, I have made ha homemade pizzas with uh, my kids. My children and I, uh, and even Brent and I, everything we do involves pizza. It is really, really sad. There's also a little Italian guy in um, Nurtuk that runs a very dingy looking pizzeria. I'm sorry if you're listening. It does. It just looks like it needs to spruce up. I think the pizzeria has been there for like 700 years. And you walk in and it's like this culture shock. You feel like you're in old Sicily in Italy. And he walks out with the most amazing hospitality because there's nothing else. Okay. It's, I don't even care what you're feeding me. I'll eat it. I, I'll, I will eat that food because it is so hospitable. It's when you walk past it, you're like, oh, okay. I mean, the first time we went in there, I was like, are you sure this is where we're eating, Brent? So much for impressing me. We were still dating. And I walked in and this, <laughs> this man, <laughs> no, really, this man is from Italy and he has been cooking food in South Africa. He's won awards all over the place. And his pizza is to die for. Please don't ask me the name of the pizzeria because of course we know this is Judy. <laughs> I see. So, uh, Sorry, I'm so bad, Karusha. She wants pizza. Yes, I want pizza. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm still looking for the pizza's name. <laughs> you know, I grew up in Nurek, but I don't know that place. But I left there 20 years no, ago. No, it's not Nurek. Sorry, it's Fishuk. Fish is it Fishuk? Fishuk. Um, okay. Yes, Fishuk. It's opposite. You know where the Czechs is? And the train station? Yes. Uh, here or an okay or whatever it is then you've got the train station and then you've got this little corner pizzeria and he's oh uh, okay guys I think i'm I gonna have a car through the shop next door to them in my... sorry you threw a stone <laughs> okay i won't no. tell i just described it i drove a car through <gasps> a shop next door to them there right there Okay, so the next time we're out that way, we should go for pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm actually going to find both pizza places after this live, <laughs> and I'm going to put them up because I love them so much. And they just need, especially the one in Nootuk, it just needs so much more marketing because they are, they're local, they love local, and they do what they can for others. Yeah. Anyway, I've, I've been sober for 13 years, so. <clears throat> well, you're forgiven. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Mish. Okay. Ooh. Um, Judy, we haven't yes. discussed any of your stuff. No. It's almost everything of mine. Okay, the first one I want to discuss, Lynn, is before I get to the product, is, uh, now I can't even think of the name. Help me, Squid Games. <gasps> People. Um, Brent's watched Squid Games and he said it isn't all violent. I'm still against it for kids. Mm. Totally against it for kids. I feel like what I've seen is just it's not child friendly. And I don't feel that the messages 
behind there will be picked up. I think that it probably has a good storyline, but it's not something a child is going to um, understand. And if you followed our last conversation, my biggest concern was um, like when marketing came into place and people were going to start buying the merch that comes with Squid Games. So I am on, I, I say to Hamish this morning, you, you can download a new game, okay? Because he has a phone, he downloads his game, I check them. We type in kids' games, and what comes up? Squid Games. Squid Games. Guys, Squid Games is on your children's list on Play Store. So I just, I like, I needed, I, I'm, I'm horrified. I'm, like, I, I'm, I'm shocked. I typed in games for a five-year-old, and there was Squid Games. Yeah. So that, yeah. And I have also noticed that, there's quite a few toy shops now um, following trend because hence this is what we do, um, marketing mm. and, and all that. But yeah, and we now have Squid Game costumes and we now have Squid Game squeezy balls. I don't want to make, for me personally, again, only my opinion, I don't want to make something like that a norm in my home. And when I saw the game, online for him to download i was shocked he's five i don't want to bring up this in front of him so we sat down and i said um hamish you can't play anything with these little guys with the shapes on their face because that's how they identifying the game um i said because it's too violent for children mommy doesn't like it and i don't want you to play with it okay so those Literally, that's where we've left it. But I just wanted to make other moms aware of the fact that please watch what your children are downloading. Yeah, I, I've now watched the full Squid Games because I think previously I said that my kid had watched the first one and my husband and I had started watching it and I looked at it and I thought, oh, this looks really boring and whatever, and I turned it off. Um, and then my daughter watched one episode. I think my husband said she could watch it. I don't know what. And then I mentioned it to somebody, a friend, and she's like, don't let your kids watch that. I'm like, okay, mom fail. I'll admit it, mom fail on my side. Um, and my daughter told me, oh, the first episode wasn't so bad, mom, anyway. I watched the first episode. It was bad. I mean, look, it, it's violent, it's cruel, it's shocking for an adult. But of course I can handle it. And I did actually find it interesting and I watched the whole series. But when I think of the fact my daughter watched that, um, I really, I, I completely failed there. Um, and to take things from that and glorify it and make it for kids, it doesn't sit right for me. It doesn't sit right for yeah. me. But I'm, I'm also not, I'm not keen on glorifying it for teenagers either, to be very honest. Um, and, and my reason is that we've desensitized our children over the years so much. If I have a look at, like when I brought up my older kids to now, I mean, like they were watching Barney for a very long time and maybe it was it was incredibly young for them or, or whatever it was, but they still had a relevant amount of innocence to them. And I do believe children need to have an innocent childhood. So once you are now glorifying this and you're now going, oh, it's cool, just go buy the merch, just go bring that out, and you're desensitizing your teenagers to mm. abuse and violence, it becomes a norm for them. What kind of society yeah. are we bringing up? And I sound so prudish saying that, but no, realistically, our, our teenagers, they think their brains are mature. They really do. They're not. They, they're really <laughs> not. And I mean, listen, I've raised a lot of teenagers. Their brains are not mature. Um, <laughs> and, and so you're sitting there and you're going, yeah, it's cool for your 16-year-old to run around and pretend they're shooting people. No, it's not. Does your teenager know the implication of what happens if someone is really shot? Are you opening up those conversations as well as going, yeah, watch Squid Games. Cool. Did you watch Squid? It was so cool. But hang on a second. Can I get your perspective? Can we talk a little bit more about what really happens if you shoot someone? Or yeah. how would you feel in that kind? Can we emphasize with, you know, empathize with this or open up more discussions on this because I think that there's just way too much out there and never before have we had a society where so much information is given to kids. 
it's, it's so much information. Um, before, children didn't have open access to internet, they didn't have open access to Netflix and all of that. I mean, when Linda and I were kids, we were still conditioned to like two hours of TV a day. And, you know, then you got that. that we had one hour of TV a day. There were three of us. We all had to agree to watch the same thing. I mean, what a nightmare. And then also you get in the open time and <laughs> we got we had a problem with our aerial. And I still remember my mom freaking out because you had to stand outside and hold the aerial to get in the open time to work. And my mom walked in the one time and my older sister and I had tricked my little sister into having more time. And she's standing outside on her tippy toes with her arm up holding the aerial. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad I wasn't your sister. Simpsons, <laughs> and we had to rotate. And my mom always used to come in at the worst time. <laughs> but but this is it. So never before has a, a generation been so swamped with information. But we need to see that the information our kids are getting is the correct information. Yeah, because never before have we had such high levels of domestic abuse. Never before have we had such high levels of assaults. Never be so it does go hand in hand. And I just like when I saw that, my heart, I, yeah. I actually wanted to cry because I don't believe in taking technology away from children. I believe we lived in a place where um, we we don't have the capability of taking technology away from kids. Our children need to grow up with technology and we need, we as parents need to find that balance to do so. Yeah. Yeah, I really agree yeah. with you. Totally agree. Um, so I don't believe in taking the games away. I just believe that there needs to be, as Jill said, huge open communication and you need to have boundaries, lots and lots of boundaries. Um, yeah, I think on that note, I, somebody said that yeah. um, a lot of the kids have watched Squid Games, and my son has told me that a number of kids in his class, and he's seven, nearly turning eight, a lot of them have watched the whole series already. Yeah. You know? and I think that, that really is sad. I mean, at seven, eight years old, and you're watching something of so much violence, and I agree, it desensitizes you, and we've got such a big problem of violence in our country already, and um, who was it said, oh, the kids think it's cool, you know, the, yeah. the, the stuff that, you know, the violent stuff. They think it's cool and funky and that disturbs me. And my son, I mean, if you leave him alone, he goes onto YouTube, he finds the creepiest you know, stuff to go watch. You know, but but this is it. The, the, the more the kids think it's cool, the more merch they're going to buy, the more we're promoting this. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And apparently in Belgium, one school reported some kids beat their classmates up after eliminating them. So I'm not making it. Oh, no, and it's a I can fully I can fully understand that that would happen. I've had kids who've who've entered high school in the last couple of years, and I just it was a culture shock for me because obviously I'm away from I, I did school in the 80s. So it was a huge culture shock for me. I couldn't believe kids acted that way. I couldn't believe they were allowed to do certain things. It was, um, I couldn't protect my children. When I say I couldn't protect them, I couldn't like wrap them in cotton wool and, and like hide them from it because this is the world we live in. So we had to yeah. educate them. Um, but I was very shocked at what was being allowed to happen. And my biggest thing is, um, you've seen all those TikToks where kids think it's okay to drink Tide Pods and push each other off chairs and there's no consequences for them. So what we're doing is we're allowing our children to grow up with no consequences and be entitled to feel that they can just do this because it's cool. Well, you know, talking about, you know, what other parents are doing and, you know, it, it, it's, it's quite scary. Like I'm finding that I often get caught. I'm thinking of my mom now. Um, off <laughs> of things that happens with my kids, you know, and, you know, I've got this thing of my kids don't go anywhere without me, even now. And I know my daughter's 10, and maybe I'm a, a very uncool mom, but I don't care. Because there's so much going on out there that I don't feel the world is a very safe place. And I'd like to just keep her, keep them both a little bit closer for a while. But I, I do allow other people's kids to come in my house. And there was a girl living down the road a while back, and... Um, she was not very well monitored 
And she said to me, she wants to come play. So I said, fine. Then she says, can she go fetch her music? So I said, sure. So they were all playing in the bedroom. They're playing music. They're jamming. They're having a great time. I'm sitting at the table downstairs working the other. And I'm working. So it took a while for my brain to take in. But I don't know what song or it was some rap thing. And the words were, I'm going to lick your pussy. And it's going, I'm going to lick your pussy. Yeah. I'm, and I'm like, I said, and this was three years ago. Three. A year before the pandemic no. started. So my daughter I, just turned seven. My son was four. And I'm sitting and, there. I'm like, okay, the, uh, 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 I'm not ready for this. Well, I, you know, <laughs> so I go to the room and I say, I'm, I'm sorry, could you just turn that off, please? And she's like, please. I said, what's with that song? She goes, oh, don't you like the flicking? I said, honey, that goes way beyond flicking. She goes, oh, who put that on? The, whose music is that? No, it's mine. So I said, but who put it on there? No, my mom put that music on for me. On the thing. So I said, oh, okay. You know, it, it's just different families have got different standards. And I'm not, I don't really feel I'm a stuck-up mom with all these hectic rules. But, like, there's just certain things. <laughs> that, I, was, that was shocking. I'm taking, no, I'm taking pride in certain things. I'm okay being uncool. I'm good. I, I'm fine. You can call me old fashioned. You can call me whatever. I'm good. My child is safe and he's still alive. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the others are that they're still there. Like they've they've all lived and they're all fine. So I'm good. We've got a five year old Lynn that is in our our complex is big. Guys, it's like eighty, maybe what seventy, eighty flats here. You've seen how wide that gate opens, Lynn. It's ongoing traffic all the time. Um, he's five, so he's Hamish's age. And he's literally in the road from 8 in the morning until 9, 10 o'clock at night. He's five. Um, no, I me. allow him to play with Hamish um, because I'm here. And he's not allowed to play if I'm busy. So it has. it can only be if... I'm not busy if I'm prepared to sit down and monitor the, the play because I've had to reprimand for swearing. I've had to reprimand for violence. I've had, but I also believe that it takes a village. I don't know what that mom is going through. I don't know why no. the child is kicked out at eight in the morning. I don't know why. Um, and whilst it's not my responsibility to bring up her child, I would hate it if it was my child that was out there. Somebody knew what was going on and nothing happened. So he's allowed to come and play with Hamish, but it shocks me that we live in a time where, I mean, any pedophile could live in this complex. Anyone could run that poor boy over. He gets exactly. up to the most amazingly naughty stuff because he's bored. I mean, he ripped all the post out the post box yesterday. We saw him trying to climb into the swimming pool. I actually, I'm, look, I'm that uncool auntie in the complex. I will shout at you. So I, I shouted from the balcony, hey, out the swimming pool. You're five. You should not be unsupervised in a swimming pool. Now, a swimming pool has a has a gate. It has a fence. But yeah, this kid was getting into the swimming pool, and um, so I should probably go and knock on his mom's door and go like, "Hey, your kid." But I've got a feeling that if you let your kid out at eight in the morning and you don't really care if he's home by eight or nine, you don't really care if I knock on your door either. So I think that you sometimes have to just like take a step back. Um, not everyone else's home is going to be run like yours, but it's okay to be uncool. Oh, you know, it's, it's scary and I can't get my head around it. So the same girl, when she was six, seven, um, she came to our house early on a Sunday morning and she said, can she come play? We were actually on our way out. So I said, it's not a good time, maybe later. And in our, you've seen our complex, Judy. It's not yes. really a complex. It's more like just empty plots and a dirt road. It was only our house that's got kids in, and she was at the other house. And then it's holiday houses that mostly are empty. It's um, plots where there's nothing there, just bush. And a couple of people live here permanently. But everybody else, are they're all adults. There's nothing else here. Like nothing. So that day, she came at about 10 in the morning I think. 9, 10 in the morning, and I said, no, we're going out, you know, you can come later. Half past eight that night, the family members knock on my door. My kids are in bed, they're sleeping. And they ask me, oh, where is she? I said, I don't know 
where your child is? I said, I saw her at 10 o'clock, 9, 10 o'clock this morning. She didn't come in. We were going out. So this family, for the entire day, and it's winter, it's dark. Didn't winter, you know where she was? I, mean, I, I looked at them and I just said, I said to the guy, it was, it was the grandpa, I, I said, if it's half past eight on a Sunday night and it's dark, don't knock on my door. Your child is not here. Yeah. If your child is here and it's not getting dark, if I allow her to stay later, I walk her to your house, you know that, and I say, can she stay for dinner and I'll walk her back in the dark. You, it doesn't happen in my home. I was, in my, you know, my heart, she was fine. I don't know where she was. But, you know, to just not have any sort of parental anything, it, it, it makes me very sad. You know, and with all the, the kidnappings, the, yeah. oh. It, it, it breaks my heart. Um, I, I can't, it, I, I've always struggled. Now, my children bring home the, the, the kids that need a little extra love. They always have. Yeah. Um, and Hamish is the same. He'll just invite the whole world in here. With me working now, it's a bit more difficult. Um, before I was working full time, it, it was okay. I didn't mind if the whole world was in here, but now I'm, I'm busy, so I've had to put more boundaries. But some of the things that you see are just, it's, it's heartbreaking. It's really, I could never be a social worker because I would literally have to commit myself somewhere for, for fear of, of something. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I, I do think that, thank you, um, I do feel that we still need to be the village. That village is missing. You know, we all mm. talk about the village and we're all very big online and we go, oh, it takes a village and look, here's my tribe. That is, that's not really what the village is. The village is still that auntie that shouts out the door, that goes, hey, stop graffitiing over there or sees the kid <laughs> needs. No, no, for real. Listen, guys, oh, as they get oh, older, oh, your oh, issues oh, are just oh, different. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sees the age of smoking behind there and goes, do you need me to tell your mom? You know, knows yeah. that Lucy's little one isn't going to get a Christmas present this year, so we accidentally maybe leave something at the door. We need to be that village again. Yeah, totally. And the answers were the riots. The kids were yeah. just to play. Um, yeah, that was, that was shocking. Yeah, My heart goes out to everybody. Um, with that, it, yeah, the rioting, that's another whole topic. Anyway, I know, oh, uh, let's do, do you mind if we hop now to? Not at all. Down November. Oh, okay, so I want to tell you about Down November quickly, okay. So Down November, I saw a couple of years ago, I think it was the year Hamish was born, and the following year, Hamish was very, very much into dinosaurs. Okay, so I thought, oh, that's cute. Let's do that because I love to make memories. So every year in November, I do Die November on my Instagram and Facebook page where Hamish's dinosaurs wake up to a new activity or something crazy that they've done every single night. So for the whole of November, I move those dinosaurs and I make them do something. It's usually a fun activity. And one of the reasons I love this so much is firstly, this child gets a beam across his face like you cannot believe. He rushes there. He can't, yeah, you can't give too much freedom. He rushes there. Um, he can't wait to see what the next thing is. And I set it up usually with something that keeps him busy. So it's Play-Doh or it's painting or it's reading. And that is how he starts his morning. Now, when I was in the classroom, one of the things I love to do, because kids are rowdy in the morning, people, you get <laughs> nothing done. Okay. And my class would come in, they would rush in, they would, I would be like, no, I can't deal with that. I've only had one cup of coffee. Um, so one of the things I like to do was I love to set out a quiet time activity, right? So it would be a puzzle on this page and a building on that page and you could do Lego over there and you could have the quiet time books over there. And each child went and they sat and they started their morning calmly. They started their morning with a really calm activity. And for toddlers or preschoolers, this is really, really exciting because not only does mom get to center herself and have that second cup of hot coffee, but your child also starts their day in such a great mindset. So they've had this great, exciting dinosaur. It doesn't have to be a dinosaur. We also do it for the elves, but it can be any of those. <laughs> and um, you follow it with something that keeps them engaged and entertained and calms them down and gets them to focus for the day. 
So, yeah, that's the reason why we do Die November. So yeah. every day you can find a new thing. I'd love you guys to follow. If you do it, please just hashtag Fun Mama Dino November and I will find yours. And I am always eager to share. Awesome. Nice. And, and yes. Play Shifu. <gasps> okay, people, I love Play Shifu. Um, now you saw the Dino Globe last week. Um, love Play Shifu. Okay, so Play Shifu. Um, the PRs here in South Africa contacted us. We did a, um, a review for the dinosaurs. And then we were contacted by their American um, uh, company to become uh, brand ambassadors for them, which we have, like, because I'm going to say no. Um, <laughs> and when it, when I'm just like, it's STEM products, guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, one of the things that we, we had to do was this is why I ended up with an Amazon product was um, we received the products from America from, um, from Amazon. So this is called the Tacto Electrical. And what this one is, um, there will be a full review up, OK? Um, currently, it's available on Amazon. And I am actually looking to see if we have any South African places that I can link uh, where you guys can purchase it as well. Um, so basically, when I open this, it attaches to an app that you download. And it will attach to your child's tab. And they use all these little figures. I don't know if you can see, but I'm going to hold one up. Okay, so as a kid, my dad ran an electronics club after school. So I know a little bit about circuits and switches and stuff. And um, so these are little figures. And if your kids play PlayStation, they know how, how these. So you apply them onto the app or onto the tab. And your child uses the pen and connects the circuits. And what's really great is as they learn not just the names of each electrical component, um, they also learn how the app works. This is, I think, in the grade three or four technology um, syllabus here in South Africa. I might, it might be a little bit older than that, but I think we taught it in grades three and four, could be grade five. Um, but yeah, so they learn the tech the each little part's name, they learn how to join simple circuits, and eventually they are making circuits that have sirens, and they are, so it's not just your light switch, they're learning how to connect solar panels, they're understanding the job of a resistor, and they are, they're able to put switches in. Okay, so you get the idea, there's a lot of stuff. And they can make huge models again another product that grows with them so you can introduce it this one's from six um hamish is able to play with this quite well he did need instructions when i started um robin they are available in south africa um i just need to find out where the uh, distributors are and i'm going to add that to our um our products the other place shifu products are available on take lot so i assume a lot of these would be available on take lot as well as amazon and what's um, really Leanne, great is... Leanne just said she saw the Dino Globe. Which yes, the and the Toys R Us. And they don't just do the Dino one. They have a Nature one and a Mars one as well. Like, I've got my eye on these. I want them. I don't know if I want them for Hamish. I definitely know I want them for me. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, so they do, it, <laughs> they do it in a story thing. So isn't that your child is now plugging this app on and he's like... Oh, okay, so I'm going to build a circuit. He actually goes with Elliot and the Firefly, and they go through this whole little story, and all of a sudden they've got to go and hunt for the light. And so it's very interactive, very cute, and totally, totally um, on the right wavelength of where our kids should be now because technology and STEM products and coding are so big and play such a big part in our children's education right now. So you're going to see a lot more products like this from us. Um, yes, I, and I haven't written the review yet. I did put some photos up. Um, the only reason I haven't written the review was because this week. <laughs> this <yeah>. week. <laughs> I, I yeah, I'm just categorizing it like that. This week. <laughs> In fact, I feel like it's been this year. <laughs> it has so, been. Yeah, if 
Yeah, so um, I'm wanting to focus a lot more um, specifically to bring out a lot more STEM and coding stuff because it's where we currently at. So if any of you have any questions on that or products that you, you'd really like to see come out with that, please pop me a message. I don't do many competitions on Fun Mama um, because it's more of an educational and inspirational um, blog than than that but i am happy to work on uh competitions for educational stuff so if there's anything in particular that you are looking for please let me know yeah awesome and clarissa says short week that felt like a whole month yes, it was <laughs> <laughs> i know <laughs> ah, and elisa's boss has not sent the bank statement so she can't do month in but she can watch our live good stuff <laughs> You see that there's a reason for everything. Exactly. Okay. So, ladies, I, I think there's one thing left that we've got to get to, and I think you all know what it is. <laughs> oh, yes. This is where I'm going to unjoin the live and join the comments. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. It is the Bare Skin Laser Removal Device. So, jump in the comments chat to us about this device, ask me questions. I'll answer all your questions. I hope I can answer them all. I've been using this for about two months, three months now, two months, three months, I think. And it is fantastic. So let me get my pretty picture up. Um, wait. Okay. It's obviously it's getting towards the end of the live. I'm, I'm clicking weird things. Give me a sec. <laughs> okay. Here we go. So it's the bare skin um, laser hair removal device. And I reviewed this on my website a while back. And Bear Skin, because uh, the competition was wild, it was absolutely wild. I had comments and inquiries and moms going wild. It was coming out of my ears. And so I, I asked Bear Skin, and I'm like, so the competition's come to an end, but only one person gets to win. And they said, I can give away one in the live video today. So I'm really excited about that. I've also hooked her up with Judy. Has she contacted you? Not yet. I'm waiting patiently. No, she's slow. She's had some medical stuff. Okay. She's a bit slow at the moment. But, she'll but, get but it's all good because it's been a long week. So next week will be better. Yes, it will. It's, it will exactly. be better. So Judy's going to be getting one of these as well soon. If everything goes according to plan. And she's going to be reviewing it. All she's had so far is one zap from me. One zap. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, basically, my hair journey is that I'm a mom and I would love smooth legs, but I was usually a hairy bear. So when Bearskin contacted me and said, we don't have a budget, but we can give you one of these to review, I'm like, I'm there. Tell me what you want. I'll give you anything. And it has been amazing so the first part of the journey with laser hair removal can be quite intense and you've got to put time and effort in you've really got to so so when you first start using it you've got to shave and then you do the laser hair removal treatment and it takes a little bit of time to do that and you've got to do it often in the beginning every few days and as the hair starts falling out and as your hair goes into a dormant phase you start using it less and less i'm now using it maybe once a month and, oh, wow. I am and update on my hoo-ha. <laughs> I, I started using it there last because I didn't want to kill myself. Like, death by okay, so <laughs> I have to ask, is it painful on the hoo-ha? No, not at all. And it actually works better because okay. this does not work on very blonde hair. It does not work on gray hair or red hair. And it does not work on very dark skin. So dark hair it works better on, lighter skin it works better on, and I'm a little darker down there. So it actually works better there than my leg hairs okay. or my underarm hairs. So, yeah, I'm like. And are you still zapping it on, like, the high, or are you zapping it lower on the hoo-ha? No, I'm using like, the uh, high thing. I don't mess around. I just zap myself. Um, yeah, she just like, I'm going to zap you with the high. I was like, oh, I didn't feel anything. But people want to know if it hurts. And no, the best way to do that is to take Judy by surprise live and whack her arm and see if she screams. She let us down. There was no scream. <laughs> but she did prove that it is painless. No, it is. It really is painless. 
Okay, so let's see. At least ours is isn't it as painful as an epilator. At least I've never oh, used an epilator, but I did not feel anything. I felt a little bit of like a tingle almost. I didn't even know if it was a tingle. I, I could tell something had happened, but it wasn't sore. It was just like a like a tingle. I blinked and we had a hundred comments. Yes. I was watching them come in yes, and I was like a hundred and four wow. new comments. I'm going to hit as many as I can. Imam says, please consider me. She's entered on Kaboki. Good luck. I know. It's you know what it's so amazing now. Like talking about going away for the weekend or being in a swimming costume. It's like I would always like get ready to go to the beach and then realize I'm like a bear. Like that doesn't happen anymore. All I have to do is get up, put my costume on and go. And there's no hair anywhere. And there's nothing worse than remembering on the morning of the fact that you're going to the beach and you're sitting there shaving so that your costume doesn't look bad. Ooh, Rebecca's got dark hair on her face. I don't know if you've been watching um, the previous lives where I've spoken about this. So one of the things that's like really gotten me down the last couple of years, and my mom's got it, it's all her fault, is I get a couple of hairs along here and they're not normal hairs like man hair like it's like a beard hair not like a full beard but like a couple of stray long thick gross hairs so yes it works for the face it works for the body as well it's worked really well for me the only thing is that you you can't use this on very long hair it's got to be two millimeters or shorter and you can't pack the hair up because you need the root. And you cannot use the, the um, hair removal cream because that takes it up by the root. You have to shave it. So I had to shave my chin before I used it in the, you know, the first week or two, which was really, it just felt all kinds of wrong. But now I don't have any hairs here. So, yeah, it works for that. It's fantastic. Nicole loves how my review was informative. I'm so glad you loved it. This is the, honestly, hands down, one of my favorite like campaigns to work on. It was absolutely stunning. Yeah, you can believe it's painless because <laughs> um, how long did your legs last before it needed the next shave? Um, in the beginning, I shaved, I think, twice a week to the first two weeks. So I shaved and then used the machine each time. And I did that for at least two, three weeks. But then after that, I stopped shaving. And it, each time you use it, it takes, it zaps about 10 to 15% of your hairs. And um, it takes a couple of days for those hairs after zapping it to fall out. So like I say, in the beginning, it's a procedure. But then after that, once you get to understand your hair growth and how long it takes, etc., you can time it so you don't have to shave at all. Um, but yeah, for the first couple of weeks, I did shave twice a week that whole time. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look. <laughs> Marty's like an orangutan. <laughs> I can believe it. So let's see what else. Uh, Clarissa read my review and you've been stalking. I mean, I've been stalking by everybody and I know everybody wants this, but only one person can win today. But remember, Judy's going to be doing some work with this device as well. So, Judy, you don't like giveaways. I don't know what your arrangement is going to be with Bare Skin. I'm, it's not that I, no, no, it's not that I don't like giveaways. I run very few giveaways on my page. Unlike yeah. um, other people, I will run a giveaway if I truly believe in the product um, and if I believe that the product is something that other people can gain benefit from. Hmm. So, whilst whilst i don't have competitions every week or, or something like that i do run occasional competitions and it's usually with brands that i truly believe are yeah. amazing yeah yeah so yes i'm quite happy to to run competitions on well, i think a, I'm yeah. hoping we'll be able to do giveaways as well because that would be like yeah yeah but um, I, I i do think that this is something that is absolutely amazing from the time lynn zapped me I was like, I've got to have that. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> literally what it was. I was like, I want that. But I, people, but I, I like, have. It worked. I've got a five-year-old. I've got no time for me. I just put a post up this morning about how little time I have because I'm raising a mini-human, 
And only now does he forget to come in the bathroom when I'm in there. Like only now can I remember to grow my nails because I'm not actually picking him up and dressing him and stuff like that. And I really would love to feel like that gorgeous, wonderful woman I felt like when I was single and dating my husband. I would, but most of the time I don't. I feel like the Grinch with my hair in a bun and I don't like anybody because could you all stop making a mess in my house? Um, <laughs> so this product was just like, that was like, oh, wow, I don't need to share it with anybody. It's painless. It looks amazing. Firstly, the product itself looks amazing. And I look awesome with that. And it can last for years. It comes, it's got 99,000 yes. that's built into it. So, I mean, the value of this is 3,200 Rand. But if you think about how much you spend on waxing, how much you spend on shaving, I mean, that hair removal cream is crazy expensive. And then all the effort you have to put in. I mean, sure, this takes effort in the beginning, but long term, once you're into your, your routine, it works beautifully. So, Nakatula is asking, how long does it take to shave your entire, do your entire body as opposed to when you do traditional shaving? I mean, shaving doesn't take me long, but when I get in the bath, I fall asleep. <laughs> and by the time I get in, I feel like shaving. Um, so shaving is quick, but this machine, it's, it does take a bit of time. So you do need to, you need to wash, you need to shave, then you need to use the machine. And if I do like all my places on my body, it takes me 20, 25 minutes to do like everything. So that's my chin, it's my underarms, it's my full legs. It's my bikini area. So it does take 20 minutes, um, but now it's once a month. And that's a big difference. And I, when I first started using it, I didn't use it everywhere. I started with my underarms and my legs first, then I moved to my chin, and then I started with my bikini a while later. So I did it in stages, uh, partly because I was scared to use it on some parts and partly because I didn't want to shave my chin to begin with. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you know, you use it as you feel comfortable. There's different settings. So um, you can change it from a strength one to a strength five. I go all the way, baby. I go hardcore just because I want to like make sure they kill. The hairs are dead. Um, but if you've got very sensitive skin, you can go on a number one. So let's see. How long does it last without shaving? Um, my hair also grows super fast. If I want smooth legs all the time and I have to shave, I should probably shave every second day. Um, but this yeah. I'm now using roughly every four weeks or so. Which, which is about the time I actually get to really do a proper shave. So, like, my leg hair can honestly <laughs> be there for four weeks. So, I'm just saying, like, my husband would love me a lot more. <laughs> it, my, hus my husband is very chuffed with us, by the way. Very impressed. So, um, yeah, Clarissa, I think it's going to be very nice to get Judy. I mean, I've zapped you once, but, I mean, I didn't do anything for hair removal. It was just one zap. But I'm very yeah, it was just one. Imam. Yeah. I, I think know. what we should do is no Len, what we should do is follow it with a review from our husbands, how they like us having no hair on our legs anymore. <laughs> Just on your legs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to keep the show PG. <laughs> oh, Rebecca. So here's another thing as well. No, I've also found yes. that my as I've gotten older, my hair has become darker and harder and thicker and all of that. So what this does is it actually, it disrupts the growth phase of your hair. And when your hairs do grow out, even if they do grow, they are thinner, they are lighter, they are softer. So yeah, I mean, everything about this is just absolutely superb. Yeah, uh, Clarissa, that's a question I've already answered. So I use it every four weeks and my hair growth is, I mean, it's hardly there. There's not much going on. I think it's, uh, Robin, yes, I think it can be used on young teens, totally. In fact, when my daughter's 10 now, when she, when she wants to start shaving, I'm going to recommend that she starts using this right from the beginning. It'll be a lot easier. Um, I think, I can't, I, need, I might need to be corrected, but I think it's not recommended during pregnancy. So just take note of that. <laughs> In mind, you've got hairy toes and fingers. Um, I haven't, yeah, I think my, I've got hairy arms, but I'm not too worried about that. So, I yeah. once shaved, Lynn, I once shaved all the hair off my arms as a teenager. Not really sure why. <laughs> I just shaved it all off. I remember standing there and there was no hair on my arms. And do you know how dark it grew back? 
Okay. Yeah, I think everybody's done that. I did that. In fact, a, a couple of weeks ago, um, usually I pack my rain away. But the one day I left it lying on the bath, and my son came and he got out the bath and he comes to me and says, Mommy, I shaved everything. <laughs> I was sitting here at my desk working and he was behind my back shaving his legs and his arms with a razor. <laughs> and he's still, I just like, oh, you know, really. Anyway, I don't, I just don't know. Um, Robin's daughter's also almost 10. Yeah, I think it'd be nice. I remember as a, as a young girl, I think I was probably 10 or 11, I started shaving. I stole my dad's razor. Okay. He wasn't very happy about that. I didn't know you had to rinse it off. And <laughs> it was really tickle. I remember when I did my shins, you know what I'm going to say, how I took the skin off the shins of my, oh, you know, and I, oh, my, oh, I don't know what that happened to my I, my I, I think those, those first razor shavings, like when you don't know how much pressure you have to put on and you end up cutting everything, <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Zapped by Kaboki. I just thought someone said zapped by Kaboki. Zapped by Kaboki. We should make that a hashtag. <laughs> That's what I was thinking as I saw it. Kaboki, love with Kaboki. Zapped. Zapped by us. <laughs> you're going to have, sorry, everybody. You're going to have a nap if you don't go finish playing in your room uh, while I'm busy. Uh, Lasers should not be done while pregnant or breastfeeding. The hormones. She was told, yeah, might not get the best result. Perfect. Um, Robin, my husband would love me just a little more if I use this, I think. Robin, totally. I mean, in winter, I don't, except my armpits, I just let everything go wild. And then, I mean, that first day in summer when you've got to go out, it's like, it's bad. And then that first shave when you let the bath water out and it looks like a bird has been no, so my these are real mom moments that are never ever depicted on Instagram. I've never seen a hairy bath on Instagram. No, we, that's the idea for real motherhood, hey? <laughs> that's it. <laughs> oh, this is it. Yeah, so but my, my husband's very happy. My husband is not a very um demanding man if that makes sense um he's quite happy for me to be casual t-shirt flip flops whatever hair in a ponytail um but he has been known to regularly complain about my body hair specifically my legs <laughs> and my legs shape and this season he is impressed very 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 impressed so <laughs> Can braid her body hair. No. I can braid my body hair and skip with it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a vision. So, yeah. and Robin on the bath, exactly that first shave. I mean, you've got to like get the plunger to get that water down the drain. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Awesome. So, ladies, I think we are done for today. We've just got to pick our winner. Um, and I'm going to go with... I feel we need a drum roll. Boom! Boom, 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 boom. boom. Robin Moss. Um, I've well seen done, Robin. I've seen you on my page. I've seen you entering all my competitions. But there can only ever be one winner. So, today, it is you. Congratulations. I know you are going to absolutely love this machine. Uh, please inbox me on my Facebook page so that I can get you in contact with Bare Skin and I will arrange it for you. And then just one thing. I've got to find my banner. Um, for all of you that did not win the laser machine, you can still get 500 Rand off until the 23rd of December using my coupon code K-A-B-O-U 500. So, yeah, and that, and I saw again, their website is on special. It's valued at 3,200. Oh, okay. And it looks like it's it's marked down to 2,400. So if you use the 500 Rand coupon code, you can get it down to 1,100. Oh, I don't know how much special on their site is going to last for, but it's a, it's a really good deal. So, yay! 
Okay. I think we are. Robin. <laughs> she needs to work now. <laughs> <laughs> We won't tell anyone, I promise. <laughs> Just inbox me and then get to work. And then we all sort it. Um, I have got two packages because I'm going away for the weekend. So I will get you guys with the competition winners as soon as I possibly can. Might only be Monday. Have a fantastic weekend, everybody. Have a good weekend, everyone. Thanks. For Enjoy your weekend away, Lynn. Cool. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye.